out hunting, and there in the corner stood a big animal. They fired, they fired their weapon. The animal went down, and the pastor said, "You know, I think I got him." The doctor said, "No, I think I got him." The lawyer said, "No, I think I got him." So the three friends start to argue about which bullet killed the animal. The lawyer said, well, let us call a ballistic expert to find out which bullet killed the animal. So the ballistic expert came and stood down, looked at the animal, and he said, well, the preacher killed it. The lawyer said, can you prove it? He said, yes. The bullet went in one ear and went out of the other. <laughs> You know, most people laugh at a joke three times. First time when they hear it, second time when someone explains it to them, and the third time when they finally understand it. If somebody is sitting next to you and they're not smiling or laughing, tell them to wait for it. They say, wait for what? The explanation. Well, my name is Steve Bear. I come from Dallas, Texas, and beside every great man is a great woman. Thank you for your overwhelming support, ladies. Let me try this one more time. I said, beside, not behind, beside every great man is a great woman. Thank God for my wife. I call her my girlfriend, but she's my wife. And, you know, we've been together all over the world in 118 nations. Actually, we're, we're an international family. You know, I'm an American citizen, but I actually was not born here. I moved here to the United States as a teenager. And my wife actually is originally from Belgium. Thank you for your support. <laughs> you know, Belgium is a country in the, in the center of Europe, you know, where you have the headquarter of NATO in the EU parliament. So that's, that's who we are. We love Jesus. Based in Dallas, we travel all over the world, and we're so excited to be here with you. Awesome. <laughs> and Pastor Mike, you know, I just thank you for extending the invitation. You know, when we met in Virginia, I think it was last year, you guys going to come, and I'm so blessed to be here. And just what a wonderful, how many of you appreciate these men of God, these great men of God here? And, uh, and of course, today we have a very good friend of our ministry, personal friends of ours, uh, George Paula is here in the front. He's here in the front. Step by the Lord. So um, I want to give away some, some of the teachings. We have a table of products in the room here in the back. I think at the end of the service, you're going to have an opportunity to go there. We'll be there meeting and greeting folks, shaking hands, signing books. But I'd like to give some stuff away uh, that you know some of the things that are in the back here. This this teaching is called Possessing the Blessing. Anybody wants that? Possessing yeah. the yeah. Blessing. <laughs> Possessing the Blessing. You, you, you gotta understand the dynamics of the blessing. Remember how hard, you know, in the scripture you find that Jacob was fighting and he was he was eating. He fought with God and said, I won't let you go until you bless me. There's something about somebody that is blessed. They survive when other people won't survive. What brings people under takes them over. But you got to understand the dynamics of the blessing. You want to give that to somebody who's not doing that? I'm going to need somebody to help me here. So just, just give it to somebody over there because I don't, I don't want to throw that. I don't want to hurt somebody. Uh, this this teaching here is one of is one of our uh, one of the things that we do is marketplace ministry. This is one of our marketplace ministry that's called streams yeah. of kingdom revenue, streams of how to generate wealth. Anything that is counterproductive to the advancement of God's kingdom is a demonic system. But for every demonic system, there is a kingdom and apostolic model designed by God to counter or replace the demonic system. But it is our responsibility. To, to find that kingdom and apostolic model and to replace the demonic system. So I'm talking about seven streams of kingdom revenue in this teaching. 
It's very powerful, economic empowerment. There's a lady over there with her right hand in the back. She's raising her hand. Very special hand. I like that, man. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my wife's teaching. By the way, tomorrow morning, you don't want to miss it. You know, I always tell people who say, would you marry this is a beautiful woman? I said, don't be deceived by the good look and the blonde hair. There's a tiger living on the inside. I'm telling you, she's a powerful, she's anointed, she loves people, and uh, one thing about my wife, she has so much love. Amen. And she just hugs, she loves to hug people. And, you know, you said to and she's a great speaker as well. So this is one of her teachings called Are You Rooted or Emotional? Oh, Are you rooted or emotional? Lady over there in the back, with a, you know, she's raising her hand over here with a, with a here we go. Uh, we have several books. Uh, everybody say today's readers. Today's readers are tomorrow's leaders. Are tomorrow's leaders. Hello. If you want to be a leader tomorrow, you need to read. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just reading Christian books. You need to read good books. Of course, Christian books, not you know this book here. But this is a good conference uh, today. And my focus is going to be more on ministry, but. Tomorrow we're going to be doing more training. We're going to train you in the area of how to operate in the gifts, especially of the word of knowledge. And we're going to activate you. We're going to be, but this is a book, you know, I want to be teaching from this tomorrow. It's called YouTube Can Be Used by God. Somebody say YouTube Can Be Used by God. YouTube Can Be Used by God. Here's a problem. Many times around the world when I tell people God wants to use you, the many times the first reaction is, well, you don't really know me. And they want to tell me about their history, how many times they've blown it, how they mess things up. I mean, you know, of, of course, God uses people that have never made mistakes, but God uses people that have made mistakes. Amen. Thank you for your support. Amen. God uses people that are educated. If you can get an education, get it. But if you don't have one, don't feel so disqualified. That you can't be used by God. God uses people that are not educated. God uses old people. But listen, young folks, God uses young people too. Authority is not based on seniority. It's not based on how long you've been a Christian. So God uses young people too. So listen, the next time you struggle about, you know, God can't use me, think about some of the people that God used in the scripture. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Thank you for your support. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. <laughs> Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Uh-oh. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Where are some of the weird folks? Peter did not Christ. The disciple fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus was too short. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer and Lazarus was dead. <laughs> so what, what is your excuse? That's what I want to know. This is your big conference, right? What is your excuse? You have no excuse. If you have flesh, you are a target of God's honor. <laughs> God wants to use you. So this book, a lot, most of my secrets are in this book. You will learn how to move in, in authority, how to prophesy, how to operate the gifts of the word of knowledge, how to cast out demons, and all and much more. So if you want to be used by God, this book is a training manual. We get letters all the time from pastors around the world that are using this book. You know, and we get uh, we just ship a bunch of these books to a seminary in India. You know, in the Himalayas. So it's been this book has helped a lot of people. So I want I want to I want to sow this into somebody. And there's so many hands, and I don't want to throw it away. But who really really wants Yay! it? Yay! <laughs> Sorry, sister. I'm gonna give you the next one. 
this book is called uh, Breakthrough Prayer. This is our latest book, Breakthrough Prayer. Jeff Waller, you like this one? Do you like the other one too? You ordered like 50 of these books. Here we go. She got 50 of these books. This, this book is amazing. If you want to learn how to pray, if you want to learn how to start a prayer ministry, how to lead a prayer meeting, if you want to learn how to become a prayer warrior, you know, a lot of people sometimes say, well, my grandmother is praying for me. No, no, no. That's wonderful. You need to learn how to pray for yourself. Yeah. So, you know, break through prayer, really, it's, it's a powerful book. Now, chapter 17 is one of my favorite chapters. I use it almost every day. You hear that uh, over 90 prayer and prophetic declarations, you know, that can help you really. You know, praying over your finances, over your family, over your ministry, releasing the angelical ministry of angels in your life, and so forth and so forth. <coughs> so I'm going to give that to you because, you know, somebody thought for you that last week. <laughs> okay, one more to give away. Uh, this book is called Keys to Receiving Your Miracles. You know, one of the things we're not all over the world is for miracles. Uh, 28 things you can do. To position yourself to receive your miracle. This book has been translated in 15 different languages. Was just translated in Chinese last year. So, if you really love miracles, this is this is you, it, everything has been explained for you. All right, sister, I see you reaching out. Amen. Also, there's some. If you cannot buy anything, there are three things on that table. For instance, uh, this recently I did a conference on the Holy Spirit, teaching about the Holy Spirit. Some of the things I'm going to be teaching tomorrow, you know, when we're going to be training you on how to operate in the word of knowledge and how to prophesy. Uh, some of the stuff I hear, these were my, my notes for that conference. If you're hungry for the Holy Spirit, you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, this is free. You can pick that up on that table. Anybody wants this one here? Anybody wants this one here? Anybody want to get this to the lady over there you know, with a red sweater? Praise God. Um, I think it is important to uh, to realize that every every ministry every ministry is not the same. The Scripture says that they are in First Corinthians twelve that they are diversity. Of operation, but the same Lord. It's the same spirit, but different administration. Different administration. Uh, when we speak about an operation or an, an activity of power, um, diversity of operations of power, but the same spirit. The way God uses one person is different than how He uses somebody else. It is, you know, every church is not the same. Every traveling ministry is not the same. Every pastor is not the same. It's the same spirit. There's a different administration. And, 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 and since you're sitting on the ministry this weekend, I just want to help you a little bit, position yourself to receive something that God would love to perhaps release in your life to us. One of the things years ago that God revealed to me, I believe I was in the, in, in the crusade in Harare, uh, Zimbabwe many years ago when God began to show me how he was going to heal people through his breath. Somebody say the breath of God. Breath of God. So when I minister to you, if I start to move in the kitchen, I'm praying for you, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath. This is not a new age technique. Thank you for your spiritual uh, response. Um, it says in, in Genesis that the earth was not home and, and boy, and the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. And I want you to understand in the Old Testament, when we, when we talk about, you know, the Spirit of God is translated uh, in Hebrew, ruah. Ruah, which means breath or breeze. And uh, <coughs> which actually means wind. And in the New Testament is the word pneuma in the Greek, which is breath or wind. We have wind, breath, and that word spirit, that's literally what it means. Breath, wind. And in Genesis it says that God formed man 
out of the dust and then breathe life. Breathe life into man. Think about it. Everything that was created in man, you know, when everything it went from dust to life. God was able to breathe life into a man formed by dust, and suddenly biological functions started to be activated. Think about that. that um, even in John chapter 20, verse 21, the scripture said, Jesus breathed upon his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. On the day of Pentecost, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind when the Holy Spirit came down. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 11, speaking about the two witnesses that were dead for three and a half days, it says, And the breath of life, the breath of life from God came into them and they were raised from the dead. Ezekiel 37, God started to speak to the prophet and he says, This is this is what the sovereign law says. Look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. We're talking about the valley of dry bones. And if you if you're dead, it's better than just being a skeleton. If you're sick, it's better than being dead. But listen to this. God said, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I'll put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you and you will come to light and you will know that I'm the Lord. And as a prophet sat to prophesy and commanded the breath of God to go into the bones. I believe Ezekiel 37, one of the prophetic explanation is that it is a spectacular demonstration of the power of God manifesting creative miracles. As the prophets start to prophesy, the Bible says the bones started to shake. Come on, somebody. If you have problems with your bones, I want you to know that there is enough power in the breath of God to heal your bones. As the sinews start to come with fiber, muscles, blood vessels started to form. I don't know if they diagnosed you with a tumor, with a cancer in your body. Those those cells that are that are just that started to just uh, start to to change things in your body and you start to be sick, God can give you brand new cells. Amen. Those cancer cells can be killed, can, can die, and they can be creative miracles. God can heal your blood vessels and clean, clean you, heal you from diabetes. God can, 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 can heal leukemia. God can heal different things in your body. And the scripture says at the end, the, the dead, dry bones, we're alive. Amen. Hallelujah. So Job 33 verse 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Life. Somebody say life. 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 The Spirit of God has made me and the breath. That word breath means wind. Divine inspiration. Spirit. The Spirit of God has given me life and the breath of the Almighty. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. That word life means to live. It means repair, recover, restore. Hallelujah. There are miracles in the breath of God. Everybody put your hand in front of your face. And I just want you to do this. Just blow. How many of you felt something? Is this what happens sometimes when we pray to people and say, I don't know how I'm feeling. <laughs> and you just ask your question, you felt something. You felt something? Yeah. Now I want you to know that it, I'm just, I was talking to you about the breath of God. Just as your breath is real, that's how real the breath of God is. You may not feel anything. Listen, people feel all kinds of things. You know, sensations when we pray, when we minister, people feel warm coming over their body. Some people shake under the power of God. Some people fall under the power of God. Some people don't feel anything. But whether you feel anything or not, what I want you to realize is that the anointing of God is real. The Holy Spirit is real. The power of God is real. You may not feel it, but your need or your sickness is going to feel it. Amen. So now I say, I say something to you like, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. But I'm saying, I'm going to ask God to use your breath mm. as a point of contact to receive his breath going uh, yes. inside of your body. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Teaching is explaining and preaching is proclaiming. So during the next couple of days, we're going to do a lot of explanation and a lot of proclamation.
salvation. So this is just a little bit of explanation. So you kind of understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So you're not like, well, this, I don't understand. This is weird. Or, no, no, no. This is just basically what I'm doing. And when I ask you to take a deep breath. The other thing I want to tell you is that, you know, in we move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Which means there's, there's going to be words of knowledge. There's going to be different things. So don't sit there and say, who has my permission? When the Holy Spirit is leading me to call something out that I want to pray for or minister to. The other thing is that we prophesy. And so with all these things, so it, 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 it is, it's not at the end or it's not at the beginning. It depends on whatever God, I don't know what God's going to do. Even in a moment, I'm, I'm going to stop. But I just want you to be to be with me. Amen? Amen. So tonight, uh, we're, just, we're going to do a lot of ministry tomorrow. We're going to emphasize uh, more on training and activating tomorrow night. And then Sunday morning, we'll, we'll see what happens. Of course, my wife is going to be sharing tomorrow. It's going to be extremely powerful. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking like that because it's my wife. I'm telling you because, I mean, it's, it's the truth. You're going to be blessed. So ladies, be there. All right, go with, go with me to uh, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Now, you know, you see I'm talking normally. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get hot in a moment when I start to preach. You know, I'm 6'7 and 295 pounds. So I'm not here to attack you or to think, you know, I'm not here to, <laughs> to intimidate you. I just want, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a wild man. That's just what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm going to start slow and then I'm going to warm up and then I'm probably going to explode by the time it's over. Yeah. So Acts chapter 3, you then say amen. 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 Now Peter and John went verse one. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, laying from his mother's womb, was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who enter the temple. But seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eye on him with John, Peter said, "Look at us." So he gave him his attention, expecting, somebody say expecting. Expecting. Expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Somebody say, rise up. Rise up. And walk. And walk. Thank you. And he took him by the right hand and lift, lifted him up. And immediately his spirit and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked, and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 3, Galatians, chapter 3, uh, verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone. Who hang on three that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Let's go here to John. John, almost done with our reading. The Gospel of John. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, John chapter 3, I'm sorry. John chapter 3, verse 3. <coughs> Jesus 
says to them, he said, I am most assured, yeah, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born, somebody say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, if you would, just for one more time, just stand up if you can. And just raise. Open your hands towards heaven. <clears throat> I'm going to lead you into a prayer declaration. Millions of people have prayed this prayer around the world. It's a prayer that I would usually do in the beginning of my services. I put a lot of explanation because I'm preaching here for the first time. So raise your hand and say this. Say, Father God, Father God in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I come before you. I boldly declare. I boldly declare that I believe in the supernatural. That I believe in the supernatural. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. This evening, Lord. This evening, Lord. I ask you. I ask you to give me. To give me eyes to see. Eyes to see. Ears to hear. Ears to hear. A heart to receive. A heart to receive. And a will to obey. And a will to obey. And a faith to act. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take my position in Christ, I take my position in Christ. and I take authority, and I take authority over every spirit, over every spirit that does not confess the name of Jesus. I command them to leave this place. I command them to leave this place. And I declare. And I declare that this place. That this place is an open heaven. Is an open heaven. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is free to move. Is free to move. The angels of God. The angels of God are sitting in this center. Are sitting in this center. They are moving to and fro to execute the commands of God's word. Execute the commands of God's word. Preach Holy Spirit. 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 Prophesy Holy Spirit. Prophesy Holy Spirit. Heal the sick God. Heal the sick God. What only you can do. What only you can do. And take all the glory. Take all the glory. In the matchless name of Jesus. 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 Somebody shout and say amen. 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 Hallelujah. We believe that what you decree has been established. The Bible says, clap your hands, all you people, and shout to God. Solid long night of sleep for a long time. So right now, the only 
the spirit of God is touching you. Not only your neck is being healed, but God is doing something. There's an alignment in your mind. And all the oppression that you've been feeling and the heaviness that you've been feeling is lifting. Yeah. And I believe that tonight you're going to be sleeping well. Glory be to God. Is that always, am I telling the truth with what I'm saying? Yes? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And the, the, I, I also, in, in your lower back, uh, towards the right side, the healing power of God is touching you right now. There's, there's, an, it, there's an issue with the lower, your lower back on the right side, towards the hip in this, in this area right here. Is that correct? So right now, healing is flowing to you right now. In the name of Jesus, just receive. You receive the healing right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Ah, we just pray right now for the, my sister in the back also. I speak healing, healing, healing. In Jesus' name. Uh, lady in the balcony, I see you raising your hand. You know, the Spirit of God is talking to me. I see you've been interceding. I see uh, uh, some kind of situation that has to deal with... Uh, a child uh, 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 in your life uh, and it's almost like the last six months things have been like on a standstill but you've been believing God standing on the word of God and I sense that you're coming into a place of breakthrough things are going to turn for you so I, I hear the word hold on, hold on to the promise Hallelujah. so I decree, I decree breakthrough over those situations that concerns uh, uh, children and uh, family matters in Jesus name hallelujah I see people getting being set free by the power of God hallelujah thank you Father God and if you, you're in this building you're torn a muscle on your knee uh, you're, torn, you're torn a muscle on your knee I just want you to raise your hand right now you're torn a muscle raise your hand the healing power that sense God is doing healing on the knee just stand up right now that's you. Uh, if you could just do a move, if you just uh, do a favor and just start to move that knee for me right now. Just take a deep breath right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just take a deep breath. Right now. Thank you, Father God. Speak here. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Make, if you just move your knee a little bit, move your, just try to make some movement, uh, move that knee. The healing power of God is going in your body right now. Thank you, Father God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If, if you're in this building and you have, uh, you have, uh, ring it in your ears, if you uh, deaf, hard of hearing, partial deafness, if you have infection in your ear, just want you to raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand. Anybody with issues with their ears right now, just raise your hand. Thank you. Just want you to stand up where you are. Anybody else? Just, just pray. Uh, don't, don't spectate. That's what I want to say. It's not, it's not a show. It's a flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm just going to ask you right now that if you would uh, just take your hand and just cover your ear. And I want you to push really hard right now. All those people with these issues should be feeling better right now. The healing power of God should be working on your knees right now. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Pain in his knee. All right, just cover, cover your ear right now. Just take a deep breath right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to all the auditory nerves in the ears. I command the infection to dry out. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing. In the name of Jesus, Jesus is healing ears in this place. And I say, deafness, lose your hold, I command you. In the name of Jesus. Command the noise to stop. I speak healing in this place right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We receive it now by faith. We receive it now. Just take a deep breath. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. But here's what I want you to do. It's not over yet. I pray for your ears. I want you to, I want you to test it right now. Have somebody, if you're sitting by somebody, if, you, if, if, it was, if you're not able to hear, ask them to whisper something in your ears. If you had the noise, obviously, you should be able to tell the difference. I want you to, I want you to, to test it, test it, test, test it. Everybody, test it. Are you able to test yourself? Can you test yourself over there? Praise the Lord. You see, sometimes people don't realize when I ask you to do something you couldn't do. Many times when you do these things, you activate the power of God. Amen. And the power of God is going to those areas. When I ask you to move your knee, do something. Do something. I mean, if you have tested yourself, if you have tested yourself, are you ready? Praise the Lord. If you have not you sense an improvement in your hearing after you tested yourself. Anybody? Wave at me. Anybody have sense an improvement? If the Lord has healed your ear, just wave at me. It's okay. Uh, wave at me. Wave at me. Yes, it's here. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach you more. Okay, we have issues with your eyes. Bloater, astigmatism, nearsightedness, farsightedness. Wait a minute. Stand up. Oh, how? Glasses up, whatever, and I want you to cover your eyes. Cover your eyes. Okay? In Jesus' name, I bless you. In the name of Jesus, right now, I speak to these eyes. Right now, I speak to astigmatism. I speak to blurred sight. I speak to uh, macular degeneration, cataracts. Uh, and eye disease. I speak to the optical nerves. I decree and declare operations of power and administration of the spirit right now. I speak healing. I say eyes be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just take a deep breath right now. I speak healing in Jesus name. Thank you Father God. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is opening eyes. Jesus is healing eyes. Jesus is healing eyes in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just take a deep breath. Ah, Amen. Amen. Just take, take your eyes. Take your hands off your eyes. And I want you to test yourself. Take a Bible. Read. Do something you couldn't do before. Right now. Test yourself. Test yourself. Test yourself. Hallelujah. Can you put something on the screen for us, please? That, that may help some people. Thank you, Lord. Test yourself. Test yourself. Hallelujah. Test yourself. If, you, if, you, if your side has improved, I just want you to wave at me. Wave at me. I want to see what God is doing. Size and crew, wave at me, wave at me, wave at me, wave at me. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Now, earlier I would pray for people with pain in the neck. Uh, if you, if that, the pain is gone, I want you to wave at me. <coughs> wave at me, the pain is gone, I want you to wave at me, the pain in the neck. We pray for people with ears, issues. If, 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 if your ear became better, the Lord healed you, I want you to wave at me. Wave at me, you were healed. Okay. Praise God. Now, with, with, uh, with uh, eyes issue, if you would heal, the Lord healed you. Wave at me. Just wave at me. All right. This one I'm going to do. If you already in this first uh, moment of, of this conference, if you were healed by God after I prayed the last in the last few minutes or so, whatever it was, I want you to wave at me together. Wave at me. 
Uh, stand up. If you receive a healing tonight already, I want you to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. If you receive a healing. I'm not talking about by faith. You know, you test yourself and the Lord heals you. you know, if you, if you if you do, you're not 100% sit down, but if you know the Lord has healed you, I want you to remain standing. Standing with it. I want everybody else, I want you to turn around and look at the folks that already the, the first 40 minutes of this conference. Look around and look at look at the healing power of God. And I'm going to ask you to do something else. I want all of you, I want you to come down here, come down here, come to the front. Just come down here for just a moment. I'm going to interview you for just a second. Just come down here. It's important. This is, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm doing this for you. Because here's what's going to happen. You know, we've been doing these meetings for a long time. Once you hear what God is doing in somebody else's life, all of a sudden your faith is going to become alive. All of a sudden you're going to be open to receive. That's what's going to happen. That's why I want to interview them a little bit. You know? So, I just want you to stand over here. A few of you just come over here. Now, you know, a testimony is not a preaching money. <laughs> Give me your support. All I want to do is just tell us what was wrong before. Have you seen the uh, advertisement about losing weight? They have like before and after picture. Right. Just to give you an idea. You know? All right. So just tell us, Shoei, what, what was wrong with you when you came here. After prayer, what God did for you. Amen. So if you just stand over here. And look at my wife because she's she's recording that as we document what God is doing. So just tell us. I was having trouble reading the Bible, and uh, after you prayed for me, I received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you gonna give the glory to God? Somebody doing this beside him. So you better give him the glory. 
in the womb that we came out of. There's a positive and negative side of this equation. Now, heredity is the transmission of characteristics from parents to offsprings. How many of you have heard people say that you, you know, they call their children meaning me? Or you heard relatives say, he looks just like his mother. She looks just like her mother. He looks just like his dad. DNA is the molecule that carries genetic information in all life systems. Even the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that every seed reproduces after its own kind. Heredity is the transmission of characteristics from parents to children. And DNA is the molecule that carries genetic information in all life systems. DNA determines the texture of our hair. DNA determines our height, the pigmentation of our skin, why some of us are expressive, why some of us are reflective, why certain things attract us, why certain things repel us. All those things are locked up in the DNA. What are you talking about? My point to you is that no one comes to the world empty. We are coming into the world bringing something from the sea in the womb that we came out of. And there are good things that we bring into the world, but tonight I'm living a little bit more on the negative side of this equation. There are also negative things that we bring out coming into this world. Because the Bible tells us that this man came out of his mother's womb. He was paralyzed from his mother's womb. In other words, something went wrong somewhere. There was a deficit in his life that was engineered somewhere. Either it was in the womb, we don't know, but we know that the result was that he was paralyzed. Somebody say paralyzed. Paralysis means immobility, stand still, break down, stop and shut down, halt, stagnation, inactivity. And I want you to know that there are many people today that are dealing with a paralysis in their life and that are stuck in the life and they don't know how to move forward. We're talking about equip, equipping people. The equip E3 conference, activating people, equipping people. How can you be equipped when you are stuck? How can you minister to others when you are stuck yourself? When you're paralyzed. So I thought the Lord kind of told me today that there are people that are paralyzed, that are stuck, that needs to be released, that needs to rise up. And not just rise up, but walk. And I believe there are, you know, about six different kind of paralysis that I'd love to talk to you about. But the time will fail me, but let's see how far we go. One of them is what I call a paralysis. Some people are dealing with with a paralysis that is based on their genealogy. Somebody say genealogy. Yeah. Uh, the word iniquity is, it simply means propensity or inclination or a bent towards something. And a lot of people are dealing with what I would call their daddy's devil. Or uh, their mother's devil. They're dealing with unseen force of negative influence that have been passed down through the bloodline. And, 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 and they ask, ask a, they, 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 they're stuck and they need to be delivered. I just need four young people to just come forward to kind of illustrate this point. But if I can have four men, four men to just come forward here. It's just a, it's a sermon illustration. I'm not going to do anything bad for you. I just want to, I think, I just want to put, I want to put this, I want this message to come alive in your spirit. Thank you very much. So I want you to, I want you to, one, two, three, four, beautiful. So I want you, sir, to stand here and face this. I want you to be behind me. And I want you to be behind me. And I want you, sir, to be behind me. Perfect. Let's have a little bit of space. Let's have a little bit of space. Let's have a little bit of space. Okay. 
for the for illustration's sake, this is Abraham. Nobody say Abraham. Abraham. Isaac. Isaac. Jacob. Jacob. Joseph. Joseph. Excuse me. Abraham told a lot about his wife, calling her his sister. And open, even though he was the father of the promise, and open a door to the bloodline. And I want you to understand that that word iniquity means bent, propensity. So I want you to go a little bit like this. Take a little bit step forward. Thank you, sir. Something happened. That propensity was introduced into the bloodline. Abraham had a son called Isaac. And I want you to know that Isaac repeated the same lie, but he did it a little, he went a little bit further. He did it a couple of times. Hello? So it always gets worse with the next generation. Hello? So I want you to go a little bit further, sir. If you die, you just put your hand here to support yourself. But just go like this a little bit further. The proclivity, the inclination is getting worse with the next generation. Now Isaac, I'm sorry, Bishop, doing it like that. You're going to have to kneel, man. I'm sorry. And put your head down. Oh, Lord. Forgive me. He's been so good to me. How can I do that to him? What a way to reward a friend. I fully apologize. You're going to have to forgive me, brother. Isaac had a son called Jacob. By the time we get to Jacob, he is not just a liar. He's not just a thief. He is a professional liar, thief, crook, and much more. Hello? And I want you to see the progression. And here's a problem that we have in America today. We're dealing with a generation of people that are dealing with their daddy's devil. Hello? And sometimes you have to be careful when you see people struggling, even coming to church, responding to altar call, and going back home struggling with the same kind of stuff. Because they are caught into a visual cycle of oppression is what some of us call generational curses. Repeated cycle of evil that traveled through the bloodline. Your father can be faithful and you can be faithful. Your father can be a one man woman, you can be a one man woman. Your father can keep his pants on, you can't keep your pants on. Huh? You can take it in the arena of relationship, you can take it in the arena of sickness. Come on. He struggled with cancer, you struggle with cancer. Your grandmother had miscarriages before she could conceive. You were struggling to conceive. She can be a good mother, you can be a good mother. Repeated cycle of evil and as a result. There is a generation of men and women in the church in America and in our neighborhood, in our cities, people that are bound, come on out, by evil forces. And listen, singing three fast songs and two slow songs and, and preaching a sermon for Christianity is not going to cut it. Hello? Come on, the Bible says that the axe must be laid to the roots of the tree. Come on. We can, we can sugarcoat it. We have to cut it for what it is. We have to address it. We have to release the power of God. Here's what Galatians said. Galatians said, curse is he who hang on the cross. So that we might receive the promise. Come on. This promised spirit through faith. So that the blessing of Abraham might come through us. I want you to understand that the blood of Jesus is not just a proactive blood giving you a new life. Come on now. But it is a retroactive blood. It has the power. To travel back to generation and correct 
seed of time, the seed of light, I can speak to something that happened 20 generations ago. Come on, and the power of God can travel there and correct things and rectify things, and I can be made whole and blessed.
that has been in operation through the generation to bring destruction in your family. I'm telling you that God has the power and the authority to stop it. Not just stop it, but to freeze it in time. Stop this action and bring restoration to the devastation. So based on this, I got some, I got some decorations. I got some decorations that I want you to, to repeat after me. Just give me a second here. Say this with me. I declare today. I declare today that every evil hand. Stretch out, stretch out to arrest the purpose of God. To arrest the purpose of God in my life, in my life, in my family life, in my family life. Those of you who have children in my children's life, in my children's life, shall become wither, shall become wither in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the matchless name of Jesus, in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
from going where God wants you to be. How you were raised is blocking you, stopping you from receiving everything that God has for you. Hello? Man is unique amongst all the creatures of God in the sense that God has given to men the power of choice and self-determination. Hello? But we cannot talk about the power of choice and self-determination without talking about the things that God even allows to choose. Thank you for your support. God even allows to choose. Come on now, our parents. Amen. Their idiosyncrasies, how they saw the world. Hello? And most of the time, most of us who were born, when we were born, we were introduced to the world through people that were limited in their mind. And their pro and their pro project, their limitation in the space of our psychological development. Most of us didn't even know who we were until we met God. Amen. Amen. Um, and the truth of the matter is, every family has their own culture. Thank you for your support. Amen. Every family has some weird stuff that they do that are normal to them, but weird to everybody else. Look at your neighbor and say, please don't raise your hand. This is not an altar call. <laughs> and so when, when you've been around some, some situation for a long time, your weird has become your normal. And then other people's normal has become your weird. So you look at people sideways, but they look at you sideways. Don't start talking about maybe Mary. Talk about your people. No, no, no. Your people. That's what you do it. Thank you for your support. In some families, you know, the cat is just one of us. Sitting on the table eating. The dog is just one of us. Sleeping on our bed. I love animals, but not that much. <laughs> Thank you for your supernatural collaboration. <laughs> I'm not going to share my plate with my dog. Amen. With all due respect. Yeah. You go ahead and do it. I the way that mouth has been. <laughs> But it's, it's the thing, it's the thing. I'm I, 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 I being funny and stuff, but this is serious. Yeah. Because that's why marriages don't last. That's why some people can't keep a job. That's why some people cannot function in society because of how they've been domesticated. Hello? Amen. Especially when your beard has become normal. I'm not here to make fun of anybody, but has anybody ever let you borrow a car that requires some extracurriculum activity besides what the DMV requires to qualify to have a driver license? <laughs> yeah, you know, if you know the basics of how to drive a car, you can function with this one. You need some extracurriculum activities. Then I'm going to let you use my car to go to work. Uh, but there's some things I got to tell you. Once you get in, don't get in through the driver's side. <laughs> Thank you for your support. If you want to get in, get in through the passenger side. But what's, once you're in, open the glove box. There's a hammer there. Pop the hood. Hit it five times on the right side of the aggregator. Before you start. Once you 
you up be before it starts, it's gonna come a couple of times. <laughs> I'm taking <it> serious. <laughs> Just continue to mind your own business. Once you're on the road, if you wanna turn the turning signal, if you wanna turn to the left, turn the turning signal on the right. <laughs> if you wanna turn to the right, turn the turning signal to the left. If you're cold and you need some heat, come on. Put on the cold, the AC. If you're hot and you need some cold, turn on the heater. Once you get out and shut the engine, it's going to continue to run. Even though you shut the engine, and as you walk away, the car is going to laugh at you and act as if it has an asthma attack. Just keep moving, don't take it personal. And so you get this car, they just have to think about passenger side, hammer, five times on the right, getting it. It's like, it takes like a whole system. Hello? And you almost have to take notes to drive this car. But the person that owns the car got the system down. Come on, they don't have to pick my time. What has happened? I'm not making fun of you. About the car. What has happened? The weird has become normal. Hello? Yeah. And, and, and so when you grew up in a weird situation, where you never seen what is what is what is like a man loving his wife without raising his voice to make sure that he's the man. Hello? A man being there for his kids. You know, you've never seen what it means to be a woman. Not using manipulation to get what you want. Hello? If certain things have never been modeled in front of you, if you've never been corrected, you think that everybody that corrects you is against you. Hello? Because you've never been disciplined. I heard somebody say that children are born with brains in their butts. <laughs> and that when they get disciplined, the brain goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Over your head. But <laughs> you've never been disciplined. Uh, and the moment somebody corrects you, you think they're against you. So you want to buck the system. You want to you want to rebel against leadership. You you are you are like you are like that you know stallion woman that bucks the system. Can't be under nobody. Can't take instruction from nobody. You do things your way on the highway. Why? Because you never you you grew up in chaos. And order frightens you. Hello. The world that God has created is a world. That, is, uh, that has a lot of chaos built in it. If you leave your garden by itself, you quickly realize that chaos is going to start to manifest. If you leave kids in a classroom quickly, you're going to realize that by itself, chaos is going to manifest. Hello? When you see somebody's garden very well maintained, it didn't happen by accident. It means that force or leadership was exercised. Hello? And chaos is a default position because there's no structure, organization, or leadership. And so people that have grown up without structure and organization, every time there's order, there's discipline, they want to just rebel against it. They want to buck the system. They want because of the way they've been raised. So now you can't hold a job because you can't, you don't know how to relate to a boss. You can't stay in a marriage because you don't know what is to exercise self-restraint. Now you cannot function in society because you think that the world is a wild, is a wild jungle. You got to do whatever you want to do. And the problem with this is that we have developed a paradigm based on our domestication. Now, how many years ago, I'm not here to advertise Hollywood, but how many of you know years ago there was a movie called The Water Boy? Alan Sandler was the water boy. And his oh, yeah. frame of reference in my life was what, was what his mama said. Uh -huh. And one of, the, one of the things that he said repeatedly was that my mama said he's the devil. <laughs> 
Uh huh. Your support. Uh -huh. He will go to the university, and a professor will ask a question, and he will answer about what his mama said. My mama said. My mama said. My mama said. Then the Bible says, "Honor your father and mother." That's the first commandment with a promise. But you cannot allow the paradigm of your culture, of your domestication, to override the way you are supposed to function in society. Listen, you are first a Christian before you are a black man or a white man. Or a white man. Amen. Hello? So, the kingdom, the principles of the word should override all of that. The problem with the paradigm is that the person that holds a particular paradigm believes that they're right. And a paradigm works like an internet Norton firewall security system which rejects each each. Incoming information that is not much with a construct of the paradigm. In other words, when you have a certain paradigm, a certain disposition, this is what it means. Every time you hear something that is against what you've been taught, you have an intellectual reflex and say, that's not for me. So we are doing that right now. That's not for me. That's not for me. That works for you. That doesn't work for me. Hello? But here's what Albert Einstein said. He said, a problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created the problem. In order for the problem to be solved, come on now, the thinking that created the problem has to be changed. As a man thinketh, so is he. Ah, and a lot of people are stuck. It's not that God doesn't want to bless you. It's not that God doesn't want you to get ahead. But the problem is inside of your head. You gotta change the way you think. You gotta change your paradigm. You got to embrace a kingdom paradigm. God wants to bless you. It's not about what, what zip codes you live in. It's not about the pigmentation of your skin. It's not about your education. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of protocol, structure, and principle. And God's principles are fixed, uniform, and universal. Amen. In John chapter 5, Jesus finds a man that has been sick for 30 plus years. He is in the pool of a pastor where miracles are happening, where people that are less sick than him are getting better. And he's there for 30 plus years. The Bible doesn't tell us how long he's been there, but he's been there for a while. And Jesus asked him the question, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to walk? That's a weird question to ask. Think about it now. Obviously, he was surrounded by people that couldn't get their life to work for themselves. And sometimes when, when you are surrounded by people that cannot get their life to work for themselves, and they even say, I want to help you. But they are, I want to help you means... I want to be your cross, and then being your cross means uh, I can only you I can only, you can only go as far as I choose uh, to let you go forward. And sometimes when you are surrounded by people that have been limited, they project that limitation on you. You start to bring this away. That can never happen here in Rockport, Pennsylvania. That can never happen here in America. No, that can never happen. You, that can happen over here. You say you're going to do this, they shoot you down. Why? Because they're limited. And Jesus is saying, do you want to be made well? Hello? In other words, I got something that I'm about to give to you, if you want to. But for you to get it, come on, you got to make a quantum leap, come on, from where you have been to where I want you to be. For some of us, but we have to make a quantum leap from where we've been raised, the way we've been raised, to where God wants to take us. If we are going to rise up and walk, if we are going to break out of poverty, if we're going to break out of limitation, if we're going to become successful, we need to make a quantum leap and have a paradigm shift. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is. You just walk quickly, because I know it's been a while. Next paralysis is faced by a significant event. Significant event. Significant event. 
Lefeg University. Therefore, special that's like the pain for you. Go on, from age zero to June ago, so we have to come and call you three times. Because you should be immediately getting the vaccine. So you've got to be careful what you do and what you let your kids be exposed to. Well, it's just a television. No, 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 it has power. Well, it's just a video game. No, 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 no. It has power to influence you. Right. Next stage, age five to nine, they go through a phenomenon called modeling. They're looking for a hero. Hello? <coughs> and many times they look up to athletes and why do you think that the jerseys of the professional sports they make so much money? Professional players' jersey. Why? Because young kids, they, they look for a hero. Yeah. So that's why you got to make sure, besides making sure that your kids get the latest Nike shoes, Make sure that they have some exposure about the power of God, Amen. about the word of God, about Jesus Christ. Next stage from age 10 to 17 is peer pressure. Peer pressure. Uh, regarding the previous stage, statistics actually shows that a lot of people later in life follow a career based on whatever or whoever was the hero. While, while you're a fireman, I always want to be a fireman since I was a little boy. Why have you joined the military? I always wanted to be a soldier ever since I was a little boy. Why are you a doctor? I always wanted to be a doctor. So taking your kids to a museum, to ex exposition, will create those things in them. Next, age 10 to 17, peer pressure. Peer pressure. Who your kids' friends are. Who they spend their time with. They have an influence on them. Next, from... Uh, 17 above and above or below. This next stage can happen even at an early age. It's a significant event. A significant event that takes place in their lives and they're attached meanings to it. They develop value and attach meaning to it. They develop a life strategy around it. It can be something traumatic, something bad that happened, a woman that has been raped. You know, when you see people that are prostitutes and doing those things, a lot of time they've been sexually abused. They start there, a significant event, something happened. Then they develop a, 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 a life strategy, a body system around it, and it affects their lives. And many of them become paralyzed. The loss of a parent, the loss of a child, the loss of some people today, they don't want to serve God. They're mad at God because they think that, that God is a bad God. If God was good, how come there's so much evil in the world? And so forth and so forth. People that are paralyzed and they've lost their mind over a situation that happened. Now, there's a term that they call uh, to describe what happens to soldiers that have been back from war, from the theater of war, into the nation. They're now surrounded by people that love them, but they're having what they call post-traumatic syndrome. In other words, the drama is being replayed in the mind, even though they have been removed by distance and geography from the place where it took place. But there are situations that can trigger the repeat of the drama in their mind. And suddenly they walk down the street and start to scan the building, looking for snipers, looking for enemies. And oh, they get mad at how something can trigger it. the replay of the drama. The power of trauma. Trauma is really powerful. And it's, it's, it's a silent torment. You can see somebody having a high executive job, uh, you know, uh, having a six-figure income, living in the greatest neighborhood, having an expensive car, a great family, and yet deep on the inside, they're suffering because of something that took place 30 years ago in their childhood, and they're messed up psychologically, messed up emotionally, and it's all dressed up on the outside, and you can never tell until it is too late. Until the pressure that has built for years just explodes on the outside and they go knock and people say, how in the world did this happen? No, no, no. It was not, it was, it didn't happen that day. It was always there for a long time. They were suffering, but they were suffering silently. Hello? And when you are a silent sufferer, I 
I believe there's a generation of men and women in the church that are silent sufferers. They have been traumatized. They, they're living with secrets in their life that they, they are afraid for their spouse to find out. They're afraid for their neighbors to find out. They're afraid for the pastors to find out. They're living with secrets. Something happened, a significant event, and they're paralyzed. And many times it goes out of anger. Why are you so angry? This pain. And you lash out on people that didn't do anything wrong to you. But deep on the inside, there's something, there's a paralysis. Hello? Now, years ago, years ago, there's a cartoon movie called Nemo. You know, uh, the story on the movie about a father fish to get his son fish to school, and then the son got lost. And, he traveled the world, come on, and rescued his son. I mean, I mean, you start to watch that cartoon movie and you find it. Can you, you start to ask the question, can fish talk like we do? <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> you start to ask yourself, you start the question, do they, do they, do they have like kids, they, they go to school and all that, they do all that. Maybe it's something you don't know anything about. But listen, there was a family that had a fish a goldfish in an aquarium. That aquarium started to leak out. And there were people watching TV, people walking by. Nobody noticed that the water was leaking out of the aquarium. As a result, the fish died. And they found the fish dead with his mouth open. Could it be that the fish was trying to say something? <laughs> Listen, no entity can have life taken away from it without a cry for survival. Hello? Amen. You cut the chicken's head, it's still broke. You cut the head of the snake, it's still broke. You kill the mosquito sometime, it's still broke. It's a cry for survival. I know fish don't speak and human don't speak fish language, but listen, if you fish to speak and human to hear, what would have been the cry of that fish? The cry would have been, hey, you watch the television. Don't you care? I'm dying. The water is going out. Hey, you going out? Can't you rescue me? Listen, no entity can, uh, that is alive can have life taken away from it without a cry for survival. Addiction is a cry for survival. People turn into drugs because of their own internal dissatisfaction and, and, and traumatization. People turn to alcohol. People turn to sex. People turn to all kinds of things to try to medicate their dysfunction. But it is a cry for help. Yeah. And I want you to know that we, we have to reach out. And that's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching. Tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to move in the power of God. But you got to be whole. Amen. You got to be whole. And in, in Matthew 17, there's a young boy that, that was that was demon possessed, and his father took him to the disciple. The disciple could not help him. And listen to what the father said. He said, often the spirit took him and threw him down. Down, that's depression. And many people that have been traumatized are battling depression in this land, I'm telling you. So many people are under some kind of medication trying to sleep at night, try to keep their mind together, try to hold it together. Why? Wow. There's, there's, there's a depression, a spirit of depression in this land. People being oppressed in their mind, oppressed in their emotion. In some kind of pill, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're taking a pill, I'm going to believe God set you free tonight. You know, uh, and then the father said to Jesus, other times the spirit has taken him and threw him in the fire. That's suicide. The next stage when you're in depression for a long time is suicide. And too many people kill themselves because they don't have a way out. But I'm here to say to you tonight in the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter what has happened, how long it has happened, with who it's happened. You don't have to tell me anything, but I'm telling you that your Father God loves you. And there's enough power to break that hope in your life. You can rise up and walk and be free psychologically. Because there are people that have allowed their previous earth 
to stop them from entering even into new relationships. Hello? Amen. They won't get involved in a new church because of what happened in the old church. They don't stop, they don't trust the new pastor because of what the old pastor did. They won't, they won't, they won't trust the new love because of what the old love did. So they make people jump through a hoop to earn their trust. Hello? If that's you today, you've been traumatized psychologically. I'm here to say to you that don't lose your mind over the one that hurts you. Because you're going to need your mind for the one that God is sending that is going to love you. Don't lose your mind over the one that left you because you're going to need your mind for the one that God is sending. Come on. Don't lose your mind over the job that you lost ah, because you're going to need your mind for the new business opportunity that God is going to bring in your life that is going to make you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Come on, somebody. Don't lose your mind over what happened yesterday. No one can go back into yesterday to start a new beginning. Come on. But everybody can start today to make a new ending. It's not about what happened yesterday. It's about the God that lives with you today that has the power to heal you yesterday and bring you into a new place. You can rise up and be free from every psychological disorder, emotional disorder, sexual abuse, physical abuse, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, substance abuse, addiction. You can be free by the power of God. Rise up. Rise up. Think I'm going to quit? So if you're here today and you're dealing with any of that, I just want you to stand up right now. The anointing is here. God loves you. I'm going to pray for you. If you have any kind of trauma, if you're on medication, if you're, if you're depressed, if you're, if you're dealing with stuff, it doesn't matter who's on your left or who's on your right. It's out of love. And I'm talking. And listen, when I pray for you, the difference is going to take place. I've seen people heal of 50 years of addiction. One case, 70 years of addiction. 35 years of addiction. All testimonies that we have in our ministry. I want to pray for you right now. There's power in the name of Jesus. Some of you men here, if you're addicted to pornography, God wants to set you free. If you have an anger problem, God wants to set you free. If, you, if, you, if you, you're the one that is Verbally abusing your family, abusing your children when they they come to school and, and when you come home when they when they're at home and they hide under the desk because they're afraid of what's going to happen. God can set you free. I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to see the Bible says at the hour of prayer. Someone said the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. The hour of prayer is the hour of power. It was an hour of prayer that this man was set free. And I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, just put your hands in your chest. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for deliverance from addiction. Deliverance from traumatic experiences. Inner healing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to heal and bound broken heart. Freedom from addiction. Freedom, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. In the name of Jesus. Depression, loose your hold. I command you. Every psychological problem, emotional problem, right now I say, loose your hold. In the name of Jesus. Let's take a deep breath right now. As you breathe out, it's leaving you like a steam. That oppression is leaving you like a steam. It's coming out of your nose. Just breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Right now, freedom, deliverance, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. Now, I know it's getting late, and it's been a long time, but this is a big conference. Let me just give you other points, and then I'm going to close the meeting, and I'm going to pray. Here's the other one. Paralysis, only based on, on 
genealogy, domestication, a significant event. The other one is a paralysis based on your spiritual experience. Your spiritual experience. You have a lot of people that don't believe in the power of God because of what they have been taught in the church. Hello? The church is the womb and the word is the seed. And when you're, when you're a Christian, the kind of teaching that you hear shape your perspective about the power of God. People that don't believe in miracles, they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so they're paralyzed. They cannot receive from God because the faith is paralyzed. Rise up and go. Next, financial paralysis. This man was a beggar. He, he, his livelihood depended on somebody else's generosity and benevolence. Every day somebody carry him there. And the statement what the statement was, you're a beggar, you cannot provide for yourself so bad. So he was financially paralyzed, economically paralyzed. Now if you know the day that Peter and James John prayed for him, he didn't have to go back to begging. He could provide for himself. Financial paralysis. Financial, uh, uh, economic paralysis, financial paralysis, financial paralysis based on your spiritual experience, and the, and the last one is physical paralysis. He was healed. Healed. Healed physically. God wants to heal. And I want you to see that the trigger, I believe one of the trigger of the release of God's power in his life is that here's what he said. The scripture said he was expecting. Somebody say expecting. Expecting. Somebody say expecting. Expecting. He was expecting to receive something. Yeah. So expectation and anticipation at a spiritual atmosphere for miracles. Yeah. We go to China a lot, and in China they have a proverb that said, He that expect nothing shall not be disappointed. Yeah. Thank you for your thing. So if you came to this conference <laughs> expecting nothing, you're not gonna be disappointed. And there are four types of expectations. Four types of expectations. Number one, neutral expectations. How many of you have an automatic transmission in your car? No matter how, how many powers, how many horses, your car can have 500 horsepower, but you can't drive it on neutral. That's right. Thank you for your, for your spiritual collaboration. Uh-huh. You didn't get here driving on neutral. But yet, spiritually, there are people that are like that. Man, I'm just going to this conference. I don't really know what's going to happen there. They got this big black plan there. <laughs> I don't really know. Listen, he that expects nothing shall not be disappointed. Hello? Neutral expectation. Now, here's another one. Other people have negative expectations. These are folks that are so negative, you can tell them, ooh, it's a beautiful day. The sky is blue. They said, well, well, three weeks ago, it was better. Hello? You should tell them that this glass is half full. They said, no, it's half empty. They always focus on the negative. Hello? Negative, 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 negative. They have like a dark cloud following them everywhere they go. They have negative faith. Pessimistic faith. They have the full assurance that no matter what happens, nothing's going to happen. Nothing good is going to happen. Hello? These are dream killers. They have a ministry of discouragement. spiritual collaboration. And those types of folks you better you better watch, you better stay away from them. Hello? Alright. God said in the book of Isaiah, arise and shine. But these kinds of people is arise and wine. <laughs> arise and come in negative expectation. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one for you. Misguided expectation. Misguided expectation. Now that the only way God's going to do it, this is the way he's got to do it. It's got to happen this way or it's not going to happen. 
These are the people that already have a preconceived idea of how things are supposed to be. I want the choir to be singing, the preacher to be preaching, and I want it to come down and lay hands on me, and I want fire coming down my body. I want three angels surrounding me while I'm dancing the Holy Ghost. I don't know I have an encounter with God. If this happened, I had a good conference, I know God was there. Naaman had leprosy and came to get a healing. He was expecting, maybe the prophet said, Naaman, do you need something to drink? Do you need something to eat? Do you want me to massage your feet? Do you need, what, 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 what can we do for you? He was a general. But this is what the prophet said to him. You go and you keep yourself seven times in the river. In fact, he got mad. He got mad. You'd be amazed how many people get mad at God and not even obey his instruction. You don't come to a meeting and they have order, they have an usher telling you sit here. I'm not sitting over here. You don't disobey the instruction. And you get mad at God. And of course, I'm not saying that sometimes like the world they issue blood, you gotta, you gotta fuck protocol, release your faith, and go through it. But I'm saying, so you gotta be able to take those miracles as they come. Some of the biggest miracles we've seen in our ministry, I'm gonna tell you. We prayed for a man with a brain tumor in Ohio, Dover, Ohio. He was about to go to an operation. We were living, you know, they were on our way to the airport, we had to leave the country. Just lay hands on him, very simple prayer. He left. In a hurry. Pray for him in a hurry. People say, Hey, oh, that was not really a good prayer. I mean, you didn't really <laughs> shut the car. I'm not going to take it to my You didn't have to not attack the car. Attack me, just get up. There was no Kawasaki, no Suzuki, no Honda. We want to be here with Jesus' name. Amen. Oral Roberts said, expect a miracle 
when you pray. Expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle. The man was expecting. He was stuck for years. But one touch from God's power set him free. I'm going to finish with this story. We were in, in South Africa. We went to do a safari. And one of the rugby players there, are very famous. It's like a team people of South Africa. Uh, our good friend, he called his spiritual father. We were, he took us to, you know, to this place to see animals and we just bought this new uh, Range Rover, Land Rover. He was talking to me about his new car. He's like, man, I love this car. This car has all kinds of whistles, bells and whistles. You know, if you push this button here, it will lift this up here. If you push this button here, it will lift this up here. And here we are. We, we, we were in this resort and we saw these great giraffes and these great animals. And, and then we, we came to this particular field and all, all of a sudden, oh, oh, you know, the steering wheel is on the right, and I'm seeing the left. And all of a sudden, the car got stuck. And the more I tried to get out, the more the, the car started to tilt towards me on my side. He said, well, don't worry about it. I'm just going to push this button over here. And the car's going to lift itself. Well, he pushed the button left behind. And it looks like this car was going to tilt over. I told my wife, we are out of here. Let's go out to the window. Now, in the beginning, when we came to the park, they said, no matter what happened, stay in your car. Because you have a lot of, you know, stupid American tourists that get eaten by lions every year and killed by elephants. But I was not about to go down on this car. I'm allowed but now there was a problem. Ah, I said, God, put an angel on the north, put an angel on the south, put an angel on the east, and the west. I didn't come to die over here. I still have many places to go. No lions on against me, Sean Prosper. <laughs> no lions. I'm not, not going to get eaten by a lion. And then those giraffes that we just passed earlier, here they were coming. And then they stood at a distance. One of them even kind of like kneeled down. I don't know what. They were watching us. We get to watch them now. We were having a safari. Now they were having a safari on us. <laughs> Upside down. Luke says to me, hey, listen, don't worry about it. I'm going to call my dad. They're going to send they're gonna send somebody here now. He makes a phone call. Okay. Well, right. somebody comes with a hummer. Hummer. He comes in. He, so he said, all right, no problem. No problem, mate. I'm going to get you out of here. And guess what? He tried to get us out. He was stuck. Uh -huh. Look, say, don't worry, I'm going to call somebody else. Well, they said a caterpillar. He came down, and instead of going to the normal route, he tried to go to the field that was full of mud and got stuck before he could even get to us. I was like, how can you be stupid? Me? I mean, I was, I was so dumb. I know you all are very spiritual. But if you're threatened by an impending lion attack, <laughs> right, 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 you are ready to get out. I, like, I can't believe this. I can't even try to do that. And I was praying, Lord, still came into the north, angel goes out the east and west, no lions come against me, shall prosper. I'm not getting by lion. They said, okay, they brought another one. They brought an escalate. The hummer couldn't have help us. The caterpillar couldn't help us. They brought this excavator with a wheels of steel and it was going really slow. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> that excavator came and just in one minute it just yanked that caterpillar kind of out of there. Next pull the hammer out. Next pull us out. In ten minutes, in ten minutes, that excavator did what we could not accomplish in five hours with a hammer and a caterpillar. How did you know when you're paralyzed, when you're stuck, when you're paralyzed, you are stuck just like we were stuck. And when you are stuck, like this man was stuck, come on, you need a little picking up. You need someone stronger, come on. You need someone with a stronger anointing, someone with an apostolic ministry, someone moving in the power of God that they do in one moment what you have not been able to achieve in 30 years. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I believe tonight the power of God is moving in 
this place and that the anointing of God is going to break every yoke. It doesn't matter how long you have been stuck and paralyzed when it is a financial paralysis, a paralysis based on your domestication, a significant event. In the name of Jesus, I am here to say, rise up. Thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord. If you need healing in your body, just, just raise your hand and receive it. I speak here in this building. In Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. I speak deliverances in Jesus' name. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Yes, God. Signs and wonders. Miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's take a deep breath right now. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. I believe many of you tonight is going to be the beginning of something fresh and something new. It's a night of demarcation. Listen, when a man got healed, the Bible says he went in a temple and what happened? He was walking, he was leaping, he was praising the Lord. Come on. He was walking, he was leaping, and he was praising the Lord. Come on, I beg you to walk, and I beg you to live, and I beg you to praise the Lord. If you believe God has done something great, something new in your life, come on, rise up, rise up, rise up.